Hey guys and welcome back to Blackthorn Prod. In this video we're going to make this cool quest system. Our player will have this list of different quests that he needs to complete and when you click on a quest there will be an arrow that will point in the direction of that quest to help him find it. This arrow will also change colour depending on how far we are from the goal. Completed quests will also be marked as red to show the player his progress. But first, this video is sponsored by Stream. This is an awesome Unity integration that will allow you to implement a full chat and feed system inside of your game. For example, if you wanted to make a chat system for your online multiplayer RPG, then Stream would be one of the best solutions you could choose. Rather than spend a massive amount of energy on your own solution, using Stream will give you a fully scalable, reliable, real-time chat with critical features like moderation, user roles, anti-spam, high security and more. Stream provides scalable chat API solutions for more than a billion end users worldwide. There's tons of documentation, tutorials and is also highly customizable so you can edit it to fit your specific game's needs. So whether you want to make a fun clan system, the next Among Us or a beautiful chat for your open world MMO, then Stream should be your go-to solution. You can apply for Stream's maker accounts to use Stream's chat SDK for free using the link in the description. So we set up this little scene for the sake of the video. It's an extremely tiny and very simple world, just to explain the key concepts, but everything will work just fine in a much bigger game or a much larger world. We've got a player character that can move around thanks to this player controller script, and he also has a box collider 2D component set to trigger and a rigid body component set to kinematic so that he doesn't get affected by gravity. We then added the player tag to him as well. We have our three different quests, so this coin that we need to pick up, this totem that we need to activate, and this creature that we need to defeat. So for the sake of simplicity, the quests will be completed as soon as our player collides with these objects. They will have a completely empty C-sharp script attached to them called Quest that we will fill in just a moment. Then we have got this arrow that is parented to our player and that has an empty C-sharp script called Quest Arrow on it. By default, the arrow is deactivated. Lastly, we have our little menu on top here that lists the different quests that we need to complete. These quest items are buttons that we can click on. Okay, that's all. Let's jump straight into our quest script and start coding. We will start off by making all the variables that we will need in this script. But first, let's import the unityengine.ui namespace to be able to create UI variables in our script, as well as the TMP Pro package that will let us create text mesh pro variables, which is what we are using in our project. To begin, we will create a public image variable called quest item. This variable will store the item in the menu that this quest refers to. Thanks to this variable, we will be able to change the color of the quest when it has been completed. So let's also create a public color variable called completed color. We will also make another public color variable called active quest color. Our menu item will have this color if it's the active quest that is being done. Moving on, we will make a public quest arrow variable called arrow that will store our arrow object. And I'm going to make a void function called finish quest. This is the function that you need to call once the quest has been complete. In our case, we will call this function if our player collides with this object. But you can call it if an enemy dies, if you get a certain amount of XP, and so on. Basically, just call the function whenever you want. It's just a function like any other. So I will create a void on trigger enter 2D function. This function gets automatically called by Unity each time that this object collides with another. In here, I will just check if collision.tag is equal to player. So we're just making sure that the object we collided with is the player. If it is, then we will call our finish quest function. And it will also just destroy this game object. Okay, let's now go back inside of our finish quest function and fill it up. So the first thing that we want to do is change the color of the menu item. So I will say quest item dot color and I will set it equal to the completed color variable. Let's now save the script and go back to Unity. In here, I will select my coin quest object and I will first of all drag and drop my collect coin menu item into this slot. Then let's choose a nice red color for the completed color variable. Make sure to bump up the opacity, otherwise the color will be completely transparent. Then just repeat this process for all of your other quest items, making sure to drag and drop the correct menu item in the quest item slot. Pressing play, you will see that when we collide with a quest object, that quest item turns red. Now let's code out the active quest functionality when we press on a menu item. So in my quest script, I will create a public void function called onQuestClick. We're making this function public since we will be calling it from our buttons inside of Unity. Then we will say questItem.color and we will set it equal to our active quest color variable. Now this is going to work fine, but there is one problem and that's that if we click on multiple menu items, we will have several active quests, which can maybe be something that you want, but in my case, I don't want that. So to fix this, I will have to loop through all of my quest menu items and deactivate them each time we click on an item. 
So on top of my script, I will make a public quest array called all quests. Then inside of the start function, I will set all quests to be equal to find objects of type quests. This line will search our Unity scenes and find all the game objects that have the quest script attached to them. And then we are storing all of those game objects inside of our array. Now at the top of my onQuestClick function, I will loop through my array. So for each quest, quest in all quests. Then we will say quest.questitem.color and set it equal to, well, either the green color if it's not yet complete or the red color if it has been completed. So we need a way to store the current color of the item. So I will create a new public color variable called current color. Inside of the start function, we will set current color to be equal to our quest item.color. Then inside of the finish quest function, we will have to update our current color variable once we have changed the color of our quest item to the completed color. All right, so back to our loop. I will set quest.questitem.color to be equal to quest.currentColor. We will also not want to be able to click on a quest and activate it if it's already been complete. So inside of the finish quest function, I will set quest.item.getComponentButton interactable and set that equal to false. This line will just make sure that we can no longer click on the menu button. Okay, now when we click on a quest item, we will want to activate the arrow that will help us navigate towards our quests. So inside of the onQuestClick function, I will say arrow.gameObject.setActive true. All right, let's now open up the arrow script and code the functionality that we need in there. So first of all, we will want this arrow to rotate towards the quest target. So I'm going to make a public transform variable called target. Inside of the update function, the first step is to create a vector2 variable called difference. We want this vector2 to be equal to the arrow's position minus the target's position to get the difference between them. So I will set it equal to transform.position, which is the arrow's position, minus the target position, which I remind you is the quest position that we currently have active. Okay, now that we have calculated the difference between the arrow and the target, we need to calculate the angle that we need to turn our arrow by so that it faces our quest item. So I'll make a float variable called angle, and it will be equal to mathf.8 and 2 and we will pass in as parameters difference.y and difference.x. So we're just using the tangent function on our difference vector two to calculate the angle. So the tangent function in math takes in a y and x value and returns the angle between them, which is exactly what we want. The mathf.8 and two function returns an angle in radians, but we want it in degrees. So I'll multiply this by mathf.rad two degree, which will convert it for us. Great. Now that we have our angle, we just need to rotate our arrow by that angle. So I'll set the transform.rotation to be equal to quaternion.euler. This function lets us pass in an x, y, and z rotation. So we will put zero for the x and y, since those axes don't really matter in a 2D game. And for the z rotation, I will pass in my angle variable that we just calculated above. Now, depending on the orientation that you drew your arrow art, you might need to add a minus 90 or even plus 90 degrees to this angle variable to calibrate it correctly. So I'll just create a public float variable called buffer, and then we will add that buffer variable to our angle. Finally, just to ensure that we don't get any bugs, we will wrap these three lines of code inside of an if statement that checks if target is not equal to null. So we only want to rotate our arrow if we actually have a target. And there we go, that's all we need to make our arrow rotate towards the quest goal. Now we will also want it to change color depending on how far or close we are to the targets. So I'm going to make two public color variables, one called far color and the other called close color. We will also make a public float variable called max distance. So if this variable is equal to 10, so if this variable is equal to 10, then we will want our arrow to be equal to our far color if it's 10 units or more than our quest goal. Now we need a way to know how far we are from our quests. So I will make a float function called get distance to quests. This function will simply return vector 2.distance between our transform.position and the target.position and all that divided by our max distance variable. And then we will wrap this entire line inside of the mathf.clamp01 function. So basically when our distance is greater than or equal to our max distance variable, it will return one. If our distance is equal to zero, then it will return zero. If we are halfway between zero and our max distance, it will return 0 0.5 and so on. So we basically created a percentage system where the function returns the percentage between zero and one, depending on how close or far away we are from our quest goal compares to our max distance. Let's now make a sprite render variable called rend. Then inside of the start function, we will set rend to be equal to get component sprite renderer. 
So we are setting our rend variable to be equal to the sprite render component that is attached to our arrow. Now inside of the if statement in our update function, I will set rend.color to be equal to color.lerp between our close color and our far color. And as the third parameter, I will call my get distance to quest function. So if our function returns zero, we will set our color to be equal to the close color. If it returns one, it will set it equal to the far color and any value in between will give it a gradient between those two colors. All right, we are all done inside of this script. So let's save it and quickly go back to our quest script. Underneath the line of code where we activate the arrow, we need to pass it the target. So I will say arrow.target and set it equal to transform, which corresponds to the transform component of this quest. We will also want to deactivate the arrow once we have completed the quest. So at the end of the finish quest function, I will type arrow.gameobjects.setActive false. All right, let's save the script and go back to Unity. Let's start by selecting our arrow and filling up those variables. The target gets automatically set through our script, so we don't need to touch that. For the buffer variable, you might need to set your one to 90, minus 90, just play around with it. For the close color, I will choose a nice green color, and for the far color, I will choose a reddish color. And for the size of my world, I will put 15 for the max distance, but again, this is a value that you will need to test out while playing for your own unique game. Then let's select all of our quests, and I will drag and drop the arrow game object inside of the arrow slots. Then I will choose a nice yellow color for the active quest color variable. Remember to bump up the opacity. Now the last thing we need to do is to set up our buttons so that they call our onClick quest function. So I'll select the quest item and I'll click on this little plus sign to add an onClick event to my button. I'll then drag and drop the coin quest object inside of the slots and now I can search for the quest script and find the onClick quest function. Now just repeat this process for your other quests, making sure to drag and drop the correct quest game object of course. Once you've done all that, you can click on the play button to test it out. And there we go, our quest system is now perfectly working. Amazing work if you follow this tutorial until the end and have this system working in your game. Thanks so much for watching, don't hesitate to post a comment if you're stuck or don't understand something and somebody from the community will surely come to your aid. Also comment some tutorials that you would like to see on this channel and we may very well create them in the near future. Like the video if you did, if it was helpful, and until next time, see you soon and take care. Cheers.